this isn't the story of an entire people. This is the story of the African Americans who lived in one quarter of one city in one state born out of the Civil War. This is the story of West Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Invisible Las Vegas Part One, I did for under $10,000. And, uh, and we were really, really uh, scuffling on that. You're talking to a true guerrilla filmmaker, you know, wh which I have to wear many, many hats, as well as, well as my, my crew. In 1941, the El Rancho Club opened, and the Las Vegas Strip as we know it today is born. And a year later, West Las Vegas gives rise to a mini strip of its own. The Harlem Club, Ebony Club, and the Brown Derby open. And what we did some eight or nine years ago, that was great, that's still historical, but uh, today is even better. And, and, and what my crew's doing, we're archiving uh, this footage uh, for future generations. Um, you know, I, I lived here, I grew up here uh, during the 60s. My dad brought us here from San Francisco, California, by way of Louisiana. And uh, in the mid-50s, as you know, a little, uh, God, I was a baby. And uh, I've seen so much, I mean, from a, from a Jim Crow Las Vegas to a d great diverse Las Vegas. I want to be a part of upgrading the community that produced me. And in Invisible Las Vegas 2, we do talk about Ruby Duncan and her storming Caesar's Palace and the things that she had to do to fight for equal and civil rights. Also, uh, uh, Lucy Flores, who represents a district in North Las Vegas. And we are talking about the fast-growing Latino community in, uh, in West Las Vegas. In the 1950s, blacks took jobs uh, uh, here in Las Vegas uh, because it was better than picking cotton in a hot Louisiana or Arkansas sun. Now it seems like the Latinos are taking over those jobs. And, uh, and African Americans have moved out of the West Side and, uh, and have moved you know, to the greater uh, parts of Las Vegas. Not only two states, two cities. You uh, know, when we did Invisible Las Vegas Part One, and we started that back in 2002 and three, and, and those people, some of those people were still alive, Alice Key. And so it's very, it, it's, it's important that Invisible Las Vegas Part One is still shown. Uh, those people lived through the Jim Crow era of Las Vegas, and their, their, their memory uh, lives on through my film. Am I proud to share these stories with everyone? Yes. Uh, I grew up in a very storytelling family. Uh, my dad and mom made sure in the 60s and early 70s that we watched the news. And you have to remember, I grew up during an era of uh, Martin Luther King and the Kennedys and um, Malcolm X and, and great men like, uh, you know, like, these, like those great men. You know, uh, growing up in the 60s and 70s, yes, we had a sense of community. We didn't have the information age like we do today. And uh, in West Las Vegas, once again, yes, it was a sense of community, a, a sense of real pride that we still have today over there, but um, once again, with integration, uh, we've lost that. Moving on.